Thank you all for sticking around. Please help me welcome back up um, actress Kondiswa James. and then we'll open up to the audience. Um, so I, I mean, I, I know you've just watched it for the first time, so I don't want to kind of, you know, overwhelm you. Yeah, can we, can we dim the spot a little bit and bring the house lights up a little bit? Um, but I mean, I would love to hear how you got involved in this project, because I feel like it's such a unique production in the terms of like that you guys kind of helped write it and starred in it and things like that. So I'd love to hear how you got involved in the, you know, and found and worked with Jenna. Um, Jenna, I was recommended to Jenna by like a co-friend, but somebody I'd worked with mm -hmm. before during the mass form movement, well the first, the first iterations of the mass form movement, which was in 2015, um, and I'd done like a, yeah, like a, a work on the coloniality, I guess, and Jenna was looking for the right person to carry those particular politics, I think. And Jesse, uh, this is our mutual person, recommended me and yeah, and then Jenna called me and was like, would you like to audition? And I was like, I do not make work with white women who have fucky politics. So then we had to sit and yeah, yeah. I mean, your character, and I'm not saying this because you're here, but honestly, the first time I watched the film, your character was the character that I kind of enjoyed going through this journey so much because you get you swap bodies with Tommy, and you know you go through this very different, I think, transformation than you know some of the other characters. And um, I, how did you work with the other actors to kind of, you know, kind of you're almost playing each other in a way once that swap happens. Mm -hmm. So what was that process like? Um, there was because we had improvised all of the stuff and all of the body swap stuff before we like gone to the occasion to shoot. Um, so when we got there, there was we shot like the first parts of it, like where we were our original characters, and then we had like a day, um, and we like followed each other, you know, like and we I listened to audio tapes, Tommy's audio tapes, um, and it was also like going through the script with each other, like we were really like uh, mirroring each other, mm -hmm. yeah, and we spent like a a whole whole day and. Say this again, say this again. Okay, walk, walk, walk. And then we followed each other, followed each other. Um, and then what was really important, I think for me, and I think especially seeing Fran, because it's my first time. So seeing Fran, like I think she carried it off quite, quite well, I'm surprised. Um, and what was very important, I realized, was locating all of the feeling centers of the character and saying what is the backbone of this character, um, and so where is this carried? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I could, I could see Fran exactly what I told her, which is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, what was the? I mean, what was the writing process like? What did Jenna bring to you all? Kind of initially, was it more of an outline, and then together you kind of all collaborated on the script, or was the script kind of worked out more on the set? Um, so Jenna had an idea which was for people who represent the rainbow uh, go well, find them, go to this farm and then swap bodies and the whole thing was to figure out the like brackets impossibility of coexistence um, and then to figure out like if we were to walk in each other's shoes what would happen so she came she, she had that sto like a broad stroke and then we built like characters from the ground up. Like I know in the first instance, the first like week, uh, she met with each of us separately and we were pulling uh, characters from people we knew, um, from whatever you wanted actually really. And a lot of it was from ourselves and our past selves and um, yeah. And then like the next week she engineered meetings between all of us like to build the relationships. Um, and then the next week, which was I think the last week before we went um, to shoot, 
we we improvised uh, in you know, like her garden or something and we improvised and she would record everything and then transcribe everything and then like cut and choose and then give it back to us and we would either feedback or say mm, I don't know or but most of the time it was exactly like our words and exactly what yeah had been said um, and then when we were on set uh, I guess location yeah when we were there um, some scenes we found like didn't didn't work or felt too scripted um so then it was about going back to the improv style which is what had worked and also because there were some scenes that we had known like the body swap we had known we would have to film there because you can't uh, how do you do that without like yeah but being authentic you know yeah. yeah um so we did that improvised and there was lots of other stuff because then we found when we were making the story some things aren't working you know like um so then we have to figure it out yeah or improv or workshop yeah um, do you guys have questions? Yeah, right here. First of all, great film. I had a really good time watching it. I have a question in terms of, you talked about this earlier improv uh, stage where you guys were kind of, you know, rehearsing and then being on location and shooting. Was there a way you guys kind of figured out who was going to have the camera at each time during the location stuff? Like, kind of how was that shot list separated? Mm -hmm. um, some of the stuff, like, was, like, very, very, very clear. And some of the stuff was part of uh, the, the story, you know, where we shoot ourselves and yeah. Um, but it was the Jenna. It was Jenna. Okay. <laughs> that was, I think, uh, when you think of the director's like, job, I guess, in a film like this, it would be stuff like that, figuring out the shots because we're not professional scenes, right. you know. Um, so yeah, that was Jenna. And she figured it all out beforehand. And then when we got there, again, some things were not working or we found other things that were more interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm. Other questions? I have one. Yeah, in the back. So, what was Jenna trying to achieve in terms of the message of the movie? Was it to reflect the black and white relationship that's in, that exists now in South Africa, uh, or the past and during apartheid? <coughs> I just want to get a sense for ultimately what what, the, what did she want to convey? Okay. Um, firstly, uh, this was a collaborative project. It was not Jenna's message. It was not Jenna's message. It was um, something that was trying to present, I guess, multiple truths, right? But also the truth of the present. Um, and well, it's, it's very interesting to me that you would think that uh, it's talking about apartheid because it's not. It's talking about right now. Um, yeah, South Africa is a racist place. So that's what we're trying to figure out. How do we, how do we do this thing of coexistence? Um, that, that's essentially, I think, the, it's not so much a message, but a question. Is it possible? Is it plausible? Especially right now with the politics and black politics in South Africa, blacks want their land back. So uh, yeah. that being the politics of the moment, I think we were trying to figure out how we're living through this moment, you know? And then to reflect back to the people to engage with themselves and to critically you know, engage with themselves, I think. Um, but yeah, just how do we, how do we coexist when so much violence has been done? You know, how can we be asked to forgive? How can we be asked to swallow? Yeah. Um, any other questions? Yeah, right here. Were the interviews like in between all the scenes? Was that always planned out, or was that like later you guys felt like you needed to add that? That's something that Jenna felt um, was necessary, like after afterwards, um, when we come back even. And she said, is it needs like an anchor or a container or something to help the audience through. And I was originally not very like uh, chuffed about this because I wanted I wanted to put it away. Like we actually we went through all of that, you know. And this way, watching it was uh, um, it was. <laughs> yeah. We, we traumatize ourselves for the work essentially um, and one of the things had been when we leave that place we will leave that work there and then to be called back and do it but understanding that you know it was necessary for the story um, and I'd forgotten so much and when she was asking the questions like I remember it and I got angry and sad and traumatized all over again but yeah that was afterwards decision after probably have time for one or two more yeah right here. Interesting. <laughs> um, 
partially yes and partially no and da, da, da. so I think that it is sci-fi I think it is also fantasy um, yeah I think it's also magical realism you know and so the, the sci-fi part for me is like best shown through the aerial shots you know and that music the soundtrack that she chose um, because and, and then the the fantasy bit is obviously like just depending on how you think the body swap happened right and even the magical realism um and that's what i that's what i think ultimately like if you think that there was a like a big brother eye alien thing then it's sci-fi um and for me although we don't know what the truth is and but for me it felt like uh, it was ancestral magic at work mm. um so that is, is a fantastical magical realism for me yeah.